Hello everyone, I'm Christy Lynn from christylynnmusic.com and welcome to Harp Help where every Thursday we grow together in our musical journey as harpists. Now often after a performance I'll have people come up to me and say that they've always dreamed of playing the harp and what can they do to get started and I'm so happy to be able to have a conversation with them and tell them about what I would suggest to get them on the right track. But then also sometimes I hear from people online who have been playing the harp for a few months and feeling really frustrated and I just feel so sad that I wasn't able to give them those pointers to get them on the right track from the beginning and prevent them some of that frustration. So today for this video I'm hoping that for some of you who haven't yet started playing the harp but really dream of it that I can help you prevent those feelings of frustration and also for those who have been playing for a little while maybe you can fill in some of the gaps where you see that maybe you you missed out on some of these steps and we can fix that before it gets too late. So today's video is going to be my advice on how to get started with playing the harp. So my first tip is to make sure that playing the harp really is for you. You have to get down to the nitty gritty and really think it through carefully before rushing into purchasing a harp. So I would consider whether you have the finances for it. Unfortunately, that's the reality of things. The harp is an expensive instrument and um, it's even expensive to do the upkeep like replacing strings or um, maybe also harp lessons or buying harp books. Um, it doesn't mean that you have to be a very rich person and have plenty of cash all the time, but you're going to need to be willing to sacrifice and save up if this is really what you want. And then the, the other thing would be about time. Again, you don't have to have hours every day, but it is important that you are committed to spending a little bit of time, maybe five or 10 minutes a day, because that's the only way you're gonna really start to see progress. If the harp is just sitting in the corner all the time, then you're gonna to start to feel guilty that you're not really making any progress or playing your harp. And then also I'd consider whether you have space in your house and whether you're willing to move things around for your harp. It depends on the size of your harp, like my pedal harp at the back takes a lot more space than my 34 string lever harp here and a lap harp is going to be even less space but it still is a little bit of a commitment so you're gonna to have to think that through as well we don't want it to be in a, a common area like a walkway where people are going to knock over the harp and it will get damaged that would be really tragic <laughs> and then also consider whether you have the patience and whether you're really willing to commit to this because I think as adults we are already experts in certain things there's things that we really experienced in and um, it feels good to know what you're doing. So when we start a new skill, it is a bit of a strange thing to feel like you're really bad at something when you get started, because that's just how it is. We never start off already good at things. And so that is going to be a reality for you that you're going to have to start off feeling a little bit stupid and then learn slowly bit by bit. So it's a good thing to think about before you get started. My second tip is to find out about harpists in your area and connect with them. I think this will really help it to feel more like a reality and less just like a dream or things that you see only on the internet or hear on CDs or in movies. Um, so maybe you can go to harp related events in your area, concerts by harpists and go and chat to them afterwards. Maybe there's festivals that you can attend. It's so great to network with other people who love the harp and just chat to them and find out what they recommend for playing the harp where you are at in the world. And then also figure out whether there's a harp shop in your area. It's so great to know where harp is being sold and there's usually people there who have a lot of advice for you and it's a great way to get connected before you even purchase or start playing the harp. Number three, you need to figure out whether you're going to take harp lessons or whether you're going to teach yourself. Now, I have a few videos on this topic, so I'm going to refer to them throughout this point. The first one is called, Can You Teach Yourself to Play the Harp? So you can watch that one. I'm not against teaching yourself to play the harp. I think it's really awesome, but I also think it's really awesome, if at all possible, that you can have a teacher because it will save you a lot of time and frustration along the way to have someone guiding you through this process and giving you feedback. So if you wanna figure out whether harp lessons are worth the money for you, I have a video about that too, so make sure you check that one out. And if you're deciding what teacher you want to go for, what teacher will really work for you, I think it's important to have a consultation and come with a lot of ideas on what type of personality and what 
type of teacher is going to help you to reach the goals that you're really wanting for the hub. So I have a video on that too. I know so many videos so organized. <laughs> and that video is just about how to find the right hub teacher for you. Not every hub teacher is going to work with every hub student. So it's a good thing to think through. And I just wanted to make a little note that if you're going to take lessons from a teacher, it's quite a good idea to talk to the teacher before you even buy your harp because a teacher can help you choose a good harp and prevent you from making an expensive mistake. Number four, it's time to get your harp, yay! <laughs> so you need to figure out, are you going to buy or are you going to rent a harp? Now I recommend it's really great to rent a harp when you first get started. It gives you time to figure out what kind of harp will work for you and you can learn a little bit before you test out the harps that you're going to consider buying. So maybe you'll be able to rent from your teacher or maybe from a local harp shop. Do a little bit of searching online and ask around from the harpists you know. I rented a, a battered old harp from my first teacher for six months and then when I got frustrated with that one I rented a better quality harp for six months before I purchased and that was really helpful for me to figure out what I was looking for. Then you can look at whether you're able to purchase a harp locally. It's very helpful to be able to play your harp before you purchase, not just listening to recordings online because it's very different playing a harp and figuring out what you really connect with and what you like in a harp. And then if you can go to a local harp shop or a shop that sells harps, you'll also be able to compare the harps and try playing more than one. And then another thing to consider is whether you can get a second hand harp. Sometimes that's really good value for money, but I would recommend you make sure that you have your teacher or someone really experienced help you look at that harp and see whether it's damaged or whether it's really a good purchase and good value for money. I'm going to do a detailed series on um, how to choose the right harp or how to go about buying a harp. So have a look out for that and let me know if you're excited and put it in the comments because maybe I'll do it really soon then. <laughs> Number five, now that you have your harp, it's super exciting and I know it's really tempting to fiddle around and try and work out your favorite tunes on the harp, but here is a cautionary note for you. It's very important to get good foundations of solid harp technique right from the start because you don't want to build up bad habits that are very hard to break later. Not impossible, but quite hard. And so it's best if you can really start with good technique from the beginning because then you're less likely to have these problems and you won't stunt your potential as a harpist make you spend a lot of time breaking those habits. So I suggest that you start with harp lessons right away or if you're going to be teaching yourself that you start with a step-by-step -step harp book that will take you through the foundations of harp technique and slowly build up that technique. So one of my favorite books is Pamela Bruner's Play the Harp Beautifully. It's a self-teaching book. I'll put the link down in the description box below. That's a really great one that I highly recommend. And um, I have an example of one of my students that I wanted to tell you about. So I've had a student where they come to me after a few weeks of fiddling around with the harp and really excited, um, just figuring out tunes and things. And then when they come to me, I have to help them figure out really good harp technique and break some of those habits. And sometimes it takes months and the student is still struggling with those same poor habits. So I'd really like to prevent that for you and you'd start with good technique right from the start. Now it's easiest to do this with a teacher because they have a lot of experience with this. But if you're teaching yourself, then I still think it's possible to start with the basics and build up slowly in a really disciplined way. You can do it. So I'm going to just list a few of the foundations foundations, like the order that I would suggest learning these skills in. This is based mostly on, on the Pamela Bruner book, but I think it will help for all of you. So maybe get a pen and you can write this down. Number one, you've got to learn how to tune your harp. You've got to be playing a harp that's in tune. The second thing is learning the names of the strings. So I'm just looking up here because I've made a little list. <laughs> Number three is learning the basic positioning of good harp positions. So how you got to be sitting and um, putting the harp against your body and then also how your hands and arms and wrists are all going to be placed and good finger position and then you're going to learn about numbering your fingers what number is what then you're going to most harp books will then also teach you to read um, sheet music so you'll learn about notation because that's the foundation of most harp techniques or most harp 
books are going to be teaching you with sheet music. It's not compulsory, but it's a good idea. It just helps broaden your horizons with what you're going to be able to learn in the future. And then um, number six is starting with your index finger. So finger number two, and it's good to just learn how to pluck that with good technique. And then you're going to stay on that for a while. And eventually you're going to add the thumb and then add the third finger one by one. And you're going to learn about placing and brackets. That's kind of the last thing in the little list I wanted to tell you about. So it's very important that you're going to play around with the harp with good harp technique. So if you start with these foundations, then when you're having fun and improvising and just fiddling around, you can be reinforcing good habits rather than building up bad ones. And I think that will be so helpful for your future as a harpist. And tip number six, oh, I was trying to make a six like this. <laughs> tip number six is to share your harp music with the people around you, even though you're going through the process of learning. I think it's really great if you can be excited about sharing harp music, because I'm sure that's one of the reasons why you came to the harp in the first place. And you don't have to be perfect before you share the beautiful harp music. It will be so amazing for the people around you to be a part of this process of your learning and get excited for you. And maybe they'll be inspired to reach for their own dreams and that it's not too late to start something new. So be generous with your positive experiences and share it with the people around you. I'm sure it will be a wonderful experience for all of you. If you would like a harp teacher to take you step by step through this process of learning the harp, then maybe I'd be the right teacher for you. I teach Skype lessons, so and I just love that process of helping someone achieve their dreams of playing the harp and walking with you through that process, supporting you through it. So maybe send me an email and we'll set up a consultation and we'll figure out whether we're the right fit for harpist and student. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching. If you're new around here, then welcome. And I hope you'll join us. Make sure you subscribe because I post new videos every Thursday and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again. Bye.